Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of Rhode Island Computer Science and Statistics. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about uh, the process of securing information um, as they travel from one uh, system to another, whether that be from a client server to a host server, or from a client to a server, or from one program to the other. Right, and most companies that you utilize today uh, have some kind of website or some level of security that they implement when uh, users access their website. Right, and without the proper certificates or the proper security protocols, uh, there is a lot of vulnerabilities that may exist in your site. Okay, so to secure information before they travel between clients on the server. Um, and it's uh, where it's required to go, we will need to set up what is known as HTTPS or um, really what used to be known as your TLS. So HTTPS is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, um, which is the transport layer uh, security that, uh, that we utilize to encrypt traffic between the server and the client. In order to do that, um, the server uses what's known as an SSL, and really uh, the name has stuck around for a very long time, and you know now we have uh, different versions of SSL that is being um, utilized in our uh, system, okay? So if I navigate to my server here, you will notice that when I come in here using this IP, right, it says not secure. So it's very clear that my website currently is not secure, and there's really no level of security that exists with this site. So if I was to put this Apache server online, and there really wouldn't be any level of security that I have that would prevent users from accessing my uh, server and really doing um, what they would like to do to it. However, uh, there is good news on the horizon, and that is your Apache um, server uh, that we just installed actually comes in with what is known as a default SSL configuration file, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the template that the SSL has to offer for us. So to navigate to that template, uh, we're going to use, um, again, we're not going to make changes, but I could use Nano if I wanted to use a text editor. VI is also a text editor. You just have to click on um, the numbers and the proper um, keyboard functions if you want to make uh, changes um, to it, okay? So right now, I am in what is known as my default SSL configuration default. file. Uh, I am in what, right now, what is known as my default configuration file in uh, my Apache uh, Linux server. So this file here is essentially where um, the security for my server is housed and served um, up, okay, so right now, if I take a look, you'll notice that the virtual host that hosts my security or my secure socket layer is um, in this section here, and it sits on port 40, uh, 443, okay? So that is the default port for HTTPS. So if anyone ever asks you, you will um, know, right? So the first thing we would need to do if we were going to make this server live is we would need to set up the server name, okay? In my case, uh, my server is not going to be live, so I am not going to give it a name, but I'll show you <coughs> exactly how you would do that. And I don't like this text editor, so I'm going to change out of it. <coughs> Instead of VI, I would just come in here and do sudo nano, okay? And... Uh, one, two, three, four. And I would basically be able to come here, right? So if I want to make changes, uh, and again, this is, I'm, I'm referring to this if it was going to be a production server, but since it's not, I'm just gonna show you kind of, oh, let's not do that. Uh, made a little boo-boo. Um, let's just get out of there. Let's come back, pseudo nano, up. Oh, no, control X. No, control X. Okay, let's clear this screen. Uh, 
Yes, okay. So <clears throat> here I am, right? So let's say hypothetically I wanted to add um, some more information to this. I could actually come in here and write a server name. Again, this is if it was live. Since it's not live and we're using it locally, I'm not going to really make any of these changes. But I would come here and I would write server name, you know, and then I would specify what my server name would be. So if my server name was going to be like cyber401kid.org or whatever the you know it would be so cyber 401 um <clears throat> whatever it would be so <clears throat> cyber 401 kid.org or dot com i would basically come in here and write that and the only um time you would actually really write this is if your server um, was online and uh, live and you actually had this fully qualified domain um, fully utilized but in my case this is definitely not live I'm not using it so I'm going to leave it alone okay so once you do that the next thing you definitely want to check is you want to make sure you scroll down and test to see <clears throat> if your SSL engine is on by default your SSS engine is switched on once you install Apache you definitely want to make sure that that's on because if it's not on then you know nothing is really going to be uh secure and protected all right so you want to come in here and ensure that um it's on okay so you'll notice again that the v host is really wrapped around in uh, module blocks to really protect um you from uh making mistakes so as if ssl isn't enabled for you with your server you definitely want to make sure that uh, it is enabled and that you can uh, utilize it um, for uh, changes that you want to make and here you will notice that apache the beauty about it is it comes with what is known as a self-signed snake oil certificate where you can actually test to make sure that everything works properly um, the catch-22 is if you're using your server as a production server you definitely do not want to publish your snake oil uh, certificate because it's just a test certificate. It's definitely not designed for production services. So it's a certificate that can be created by installing the SSL cert package um, here. By default, you'll notice that this is the directory where your SSL certificate files are held and your SSL certificate key are also housed and held. So when you install and um, configure HTTPS, you would definitely want to make sure you point your um, keys to this uh, particular directory or you make those changes. Again, um, the snake oil key is definitely not recommended for production, but it is available out of the box when you uh, install Apache. So it's one of those certificates that comes built in with Apache. It does encrypt um, your connection if you want to test it and use it. Um, but you definitely don't want to um, use it for production. Um, it's a self-signed key, um, and you'll need to make a bunch of copies from one file to the other. So if you definitely want to have a key that goes into production, I would definitely recommend that you use a key that is signed and authorized by uh, um, an SSL uh, authoring body of some sort. And you could go online and look at uh, what those... Um, places are okay again there are very options various options that you can use to configure um, um, certificates and signature keys using uh, the Apache server again if I continue to go down you will notice that I have a bunch of other keys that I can set up and authorize based on the level of security that I'm looking for I have server certificate change here I have certificate authority changes I have a bunch of paths that are pre installed and commented out so I can't just come in here. I can turn them on if I need to use them, but if I'm not using them, uh, they all stay uh, off, right? So this is essentially the main section you will need to go to when you install and set up HTTPS to secure your website, right? So right now, my website is not secure. And what we wanna do is we actually wanna secure this website. And uh, this is one of the main pages that we need, we're gonna need to go to in order to ensure that we make uh, the proper um, uh, 
updates and securing our uh, website. All right, so you have various options that you can use to change your SSL engine and to really encrypt and secure your file. And the beauty about this um, default SSL config file is you can actually have it for multiple sites. So a lot of your web hosting providers have multiple default SSL files for you know um, multiple sites, and they all sit on one server where they can actually um, get away with uh, making those changes. All right, so that is how or where you would go to actually ensure that you can access the proper directories and make the proper changes to secure your website. Thank you for watching. And no, we don't want to make changes, and we're just going to clear out of there to not get ourselves in a, any trouble.